Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training. Today, today's training, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how loose a house can be without proper air sealing. I'm doing a repair where I'm doing a full video on this, so you can check out my channel. I'll try to leave a link uh, at the end of this uh, video uh, that shows you the full video about this repair. But let me show you what the repair is. Let me get behind the camera. All right, what you can see, I got the wall all torn apart down to the studs, and you're looking at the drywall from the inside of the house. And what um, what was here was stucco, and I'm doing a repair. Uh, the stucco was installed uh, improperly. Where they 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 had it. Uh, they what they ended up doing was this is called the weep screed right right there and what they ended up doing was they ended up stuccoing over the weep screed and stuccoing down to the floor and capillary action caused it to go up and the stucco basically failed so I pulled it all off I'm down to the studs and I'm going to do a repair but that's not the purpose of this video the purpose of this video is I'm going to use my leaf blower and I'm going to blow it in towards the house then we'll go inside the house and I'll show you what it looks like on the inside and it just goes to show you how how loose these houses are uh, for as far as air sealing is concerned when um, and now this house is 40 4, 40 four zero years old when I, when uh, back then air sealing was not in part of the conversation like it is today in 2020 all right so let me show you All right, now let's go into the house and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, we are inside the house and look at all that dust that has been blown in here and over here, right over here, you can really see that. And I didn't really get in this section, but uh, it just goes to show you uh, uh, how much airflow is coming from the outside towards inside. Now, of course, normally you don't, you're gonna have stucco on that, that side, but it gives you a good indication of what, of there's definitely leakage. What I did was, is I just went into my old uh, sealants that I left over from other jobs, and I used up these tubes right here, and I went in and did uh, let's show you what I did. So first I started with that that um, that joint that I saw was a cold joint on the um, cement, uh, the foundation right there. So I just wanted to clean that up. So I went through there and then wrapped it around and got this whole section over here and then, and then did all that. And uh, I don't know if it's going to do anything, but I don't think it can hurt. And I think, if anything, it's an extra layer of waterproofing protection, protection from water penetration getting into that cold joint. Then once I completed that joint, then I went up and where the base plate meets the drywall, I went in and uh, put sealant in all in all these sections right here. So that completely made that. Oh, and by the way, I also, there's a electrical box right there and I put sealant in all the way around there uh, by the way I plan on installing a an electrical box um, thinking right here uh, facing me that way I have power I've always wanted power uh, right here I have no power in this area so I have to go into the garage and, and then bring it out with an extension cord so if I put power right there or right there whatever one of those two locations I'm thinking right there uh, then it gives me power right here to do whatever it is I want to do so I want to do that while I got this whole thing exposed okay so uh, I also I sealed all around that uh, junction box that electrical box right there all these wells right there where it meets the drywall really well uh, and then all the way down to here oh, scoop I forgot this electrical box let me go see if I got some more sealant I'll seal that one up too so that's what what it looks like before the sealant goes on you know just you know kind of rough and I'm just kind of putting it as long as I got it all exposed giving it a really good seal uh, I had some leftover sealant and I forgot about that so I just kind of stuck it inside of the this open joint right there just to burn it but I, I, I'm sure I've got more sealant I'll go grab another one and just finish this one electrical box right there okay so what I'm doing now is um 
taking some Bondo, this product right here, just regular Bondo with the hardener and mixing it up right here with my uh, putty knives and I'm going over this termite infested um, 4x4 so this here is what it looks like before I uh, did the uh, treatment on it like that and then over here is kind of like what it's going to look like once everything is done it's uh, not the prettiest and I don't, it's not really, it's doing a little bit of structural because it, the Bondo cures like rock hard. But more importantly, what it's doing is it's making this area not inviting for termites, future termites. <laughs> so, uh, so anyways, uh, as I, I'm going on doing that, I also wanted to get this section right where my finger is at. And I want to uh, put some Bondo in here. But also, I noticed I've got this this lip here which is from the uh, the original window this lip right here which is uh, nailed in uh, right there is an example of one of the nails and so what I'm doing is I'm removing the nails with my nail puller which is right here and I'm doing that so uh, this way when I go to put the building paper in I can put the building paper in like this underneath this lip which will be great for waterproofing all the way from here down to the to the new weep screed that's going to go here at the base so we'll be fully waterproofed once everything is done uh, but I got to uh, pull these uh, nails out in order to uh, put my building paper in so that's uh, what I just wanted to show you this that detail so this here is what um, the areas that I'm working in uh, right now. Uh, plus, I wanted to show you the um, the Bondo. Okay, I took care of those nailing flanges that I told you about underneath the um, the window there. I took uh, that, lifted it up so that all the paper can go underneath. So now that that's ready to go, I, let's go ahead and mix up a batch of uh, epoxy together and uh, get that on this four by four. Okay, so we'll take some Bondo. I said epoxy. I meant to say Bondo. Let's mix up some Bondo. And take one scoop of this. And it's hotter than hell out here right now, so I don't want to go too with too much product. Take one of these, take the hardener, go across like that. And mix that up. Try to get the whole thing into a red color. That's it. Now let's get to the uh, to the 4x4 and get this on the post right now because we don't have much time to work with. Okay, pretty much that is it. Uh, let's see here. All right. 
pretty much that's it. And I can go on and uh, make up some more for the next section. So this is kind of like what it looks like. I'm not done yet, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of how I'm filling it in, making it unfriendly for termites, and also adding a little bit of structural strength to this uh, section of the uh, project. Next I'll get this section over here where you can see previous termite damage and I think everything else kind of looks okay. I can just kind of button that up. I'll just uh, kind of get that, let this harden up for a little bit and then give that another coat because I've got some uh, depressions in right there and so forth. Okay here's the final product for today's work. So just went around, put that um, Bondo, as you can see, just in various sections. I pulled out that um, drip from the original, the, the drip, uh, not sure what it's called, flange, from the original window, removed the nails so the paper, when I get it, can go underneath it. I really dressed up this column over here. Oh, and, and you can see the sealant that I put in there and around the uh, electrical box there put the bondo and really dressed up where there was some severe or uh, decent termite damage here and here and just completely dressed that up carried around the sealant oh and, and by the way you know I got the sealant here and over here in that section right there too and uh, there was some termite damage here got that really good and what else sealant in both those two locations went around this electrical box over here and just completely just seal that up with um, leftover sealant that I actually had in stock. So my next step is to get the, the drip edge actually. Now either way I gotta go to the Home Depot and get some materials. So that is where I'm at. That's as far as I can take this job for to today. And luckily it's the end of the day and I'm hungry so I'm gonna go eat. Goodbye. Okay, that's going to conclude this portion of this project. Uh, please uh, check my channel if you want to see the full series on how I did this complete repair. Oh, so uh, please check out my channel. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Please click on like if you did. And subscribe to my channel, Ken Training. Catch you on the flip side.